Some people say invest 5%. Some people say invest 8%, 10%, 15%. I told you guys, I love the outdoors. I've got a nice warm office that I could be recording these in like I did in a lot of my older videos. But just being outside just feels great. I wanted to go ahead and start this video off by sharing a story with you guys. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, you know, so I do come from humble beginnings. I, I did not, I was not born and raised in, in a rich family. Uh, we, we were very middle class. If any of you know what that is, what a middle class is, back in the day, there used to be a rich class, a middle class, and a poor class, or a lower class, wherever you, high class, low class. We were kind of a mid-class family back in the good old 80s and getting into the 90s. But around 2002, I started looking into real estate investing. And by 2003, I was a full-fledged, full-time real estate investor. I did really well. But in this story, I want to share with you guys. So in 2006, I had 144 investment properties. I was very well off. A self-made millionaire by the age of 28. Now, even back then, I still considered myself a frugal person. I was not very big on buying big name brands. But I did spoil my, my ex-wife. She had the best and the finest of everything. We moved into a really nice, prestigious, gated community uh, up in the hills in Southern California. Now, I had made friends with some other real estate investors themselves, and shortly after, uh, a new neighbor had moved in. This gentleman was a broker, a stock broker, have you? Very nice guy. He was actually one of the friendliest guys. He, he kind of moved in from the, the valley. You know, he, he was very successful. We kind of brought him into our inner circle. Now, this gentleman presented an idea to us. He told us that there were three individuals that were previously executives from the top three tech companies in the world. You know their names, I just don't wanna say them. These companies don't affiliate with these individuals anymore. But these three individuals came from three separate tech companies and they were joining forces to start this great, wonderful company that was just gonna be cutting edge and it was gonna take us and it was just gonna be the next big thing. This tech company uh, was gonna be involved with, with media with uh, social media, et cetera, what have you. Now this broker friend of ours, he, he talked them up and it sounded very promising. I mean, you got three very successful uh, proven entities coming together to start this new company. I mean, it sounded like a dream come true. And, and these were early stages. This was at the beginning. So if you get in now, if you get in soon, you could, we could make a lot of money. Now, one of my friends bought into it uh, he in invested a half of a million dollars, $500,000. I thought he was out of his mind. That was a lot of money. That was a huge risk, but he had the, the capital and he had a lot of faith in what he was hearing. So he invested a half of a million dollars. A couple other friends, they invested, I think it was like 150 and maybe 200,000. I really don't remember. Now, as you can imagine, uh, the peer pressure was on me to do the same, to invest in this great opportunity. But I, you know, be, me being the know-it-all, me being the nosy guy, I, I looked into this company and I just kept telling this friend of ours, I said, you know, I just, I, I need to, I need to hear more. I need to know more. I watched presentation videos. I, I listened to uh, what their plan was and there just wasn't enough structure. There just, it was like, it was just an idea, but there was nothing proven. There was nothing put in play. And I just thought it was crazy. Now I probably could now I could have invested a couple hundred thousand dollars if I had lost it, it you know it wouldn't have hurt me financially but you know that was a lot of money and at this time you know I'm helping people I'm I'm helping family members I'm helping friends I'm I'm supporting people I always felt that you know with this great wealth that I I had accumulated I had a great responsibility and that was not just to go live on the high hog and spend all this money on myself I I used this money to really help other individuals family members and and whatnot I, I helped them responsibly but anyway after my other friends had invested this these large amounts of money into this this idea this company and and I want to clarify you know that the, the, there was Apparently what these three executives from these other three tech companies had done wasn't illegal. It was actually a legitimate company that they were starting. So there was no FBI involved. These were not penny stocks. These were not, 
This was not a total scam, at least not intentionally, but it didn't work out. The, the, these three individuals who were starting up this company just took everyone's money and they just went their own ways. No criminal activity. What they did was fully legal. It, it was just that my friends who invested this money as an opportunity, they knew that there was a risk involved because they were at early stages of the company. It was just, it was a bad deal. It was a bad investment on their part and they just completely lost out. Some of those friends thought that this new friend, this, this one who got them in the deal, this, this uh, uh, stockbroker, they kind of felt that he was in on it, he was dishonest, but I, I really don't know. I don't think it was his intention to rip off some friends. I think uh, he, he just got caught up in a bad deal and he was in the middle. That's kind of how I saw it. But as you can imagine, you know, this did kind of hurt a friendship between all of us. I didn't stay in that community very long. I took my family, we, we moved out to the Midwest because I wanted to get involved in building shopping malls. So we left that area. So I kind of over time lost contact with those friends. My point is the reason why I'm sharing this story, we have to learn, we have to understand the risk when we make an investment. Any kind of investment, whatever you're spending your money on, other than if, if it's just to blow money, just to have fun or to have a toy, to go on a trip, when you're investing money, you have to understand the risk. You know, on this channel, in previous videos, I talk a lot about gold and silver, especially silver. You know, I feel silver is greatly undervalued. I think it's a valuable asset that we all must have for the way that the state of the economy is in. However, I also share that I don't believe that investing in cryptocurrencies is such a bad idea either. I, I think we should diversify. I've shared in previous videos that I put all my eggs in one basket. I was the real estate king, right? I put all my money into real estate and then the housing bubble bursted and, and I was young, I was naive. I didn't listen to anybody because I was a know-it-all. And when people were kind of giving warnings and sharing warning signs, of the uh, housing market going bust, I just thought they were being negative. But those, those were hard times. That was a tough lesson uh, learned. Today, we're hearing a lot of YouTubers sharing a lot of, uh, you know, doom and gloom sounds negative, but I guess it just, just is. It's just kind of doom and gloom. But a lot of it is real. It really is real. Things are not looking good with the economy. If you look at the numbers, if you compare the numbers, things are not looking well. However, I hear some YouTubers making the claim that you need to pull your money out of uh, all of your stocks, you need to pull your money out of the banks, you need to sell your homes, you need to sell your investments, you need to you know, buy, run for the hills and buy just silver and gold. I don't think that that's responsible. You know, one thing we, we can't overlook is the feds are printing money like never before. But my point is, is that the feds just continue to print money. They continue, you know, everyone is expecting uh, this great reset. Everyone's expecting this super duper uh, terrible depression like never seen before. And I, I believe that, that that will come someday. But as long as the Fed continues to kick the can, as long as our enemies who want to dominate the global economy continue to stay at bay, I think that things can just can continue to go as, as usual. I think that there, there's still a lot of money to be made in the stock market. I still believe that there's money to be made in cryptocurrencies, uranium, what have you. You name it. There's so many things. There's so many opportunities where you can make money. While everybody else is bailing out because we can see above the surface now the dangers that are ahead and just what bad shape our economy is in and our, our dollar, it makes sense to bail out of these things. However, haven't we been doing this for the last 12 years? Since 2010. Everyone saw the writing on the wall with that big recession we had. People were pulling money out. At least the majority were. A lot of people still made money. A lot of people still made a lot of money in stocks. You know, I know individuals that are still in their 20s and they made millions of dollars in the stocks just in, in, in the last five, six years. But they, and then they think, they think that they're a genius. But the reality is everybody's made money in the stock. If, you, if you've had money in stocks, everybody has made money. It's not been a big deal. So my friends, as I've been saying in all my other videos, do not panic. Do not fear. Listen to what other people are saying. Take to heart what they're saying, but you have to make decisions on your own. I see all the same things that these doomsayers are seeing. I know things are changing. Things are gonna change. Things are gonna be different. But I personally think that if we panic, 
we're going to miss the ship. We're going to miss the boat on some opportunities. I believe that there's, there's money to be made. But one caution of warning that I do give all of you, my friends, and that is do not put all of your investments, do not put all of your eggs in one basket. It's a great idea to go ahead and diversify. Yes, silver, in my opinion, is the, the surest and safest, most conservative investment you can have. You're not gonna turn a profit in, in short term. This, this is the future though. This is the future. We, we will be going back to this. This will be our monies, silver and gold. History repeats itself. But I don't necessarily think that pulling all of our money out of the stock market is, is, is the answer either. I think there's lots of opportunity. There's lots of good money to be made out there. We just need to do our due diligence. We need to do our homework. We need to lo learn and listen from others. We need knowledge. We need to be asking questions. If someone comes up to you and they say, hey, give me your money and I'm gonna double it, triple it. Yes, people have made money in those circumstances and in those situations. But today, the way things are going, I'm a little weary about that. The rich continue to get more rich and the poor are just getting less and less and they're getting more poor. There's a greater divide than there has ever been and it's gonna to continue to get worse. And this is not good for America. This is not good for the collective body of people we the people. You know, we were stronger as a people. We were stronger as a nation when we had a middle class. But now there's such a great divide. Uh, and it's more than just 1%, my friends. I mean, it, it, I don't know where it is. Could be 20%, could be as much as 40%. I don't know. But at least 40% of Americans are making money. They're making some good money. They're getting a lot less. The, the poor are getting screwed. Now, do you think these up here, now this is including politicians, the media, the news outlets, and, and those that are making money in the stock and, and those who are making money with different means. Do you think they are going to tell the truth about what's going on with our economy? No, because they continue to make more money with the doom and gloom news. People keep in the middle keep getting out and they keep scattering around and doing different things and they're getting lower and lower down here uh, with the poor, which is the majority. I believe it's over 60%. I really do. Now, I see a lot of YouTube commercials where investors are claiming to be in the 1% and they say that they got cutting edge knowledge on uh, future stocks and technology. And they're saying, give me your money, give your money to me and I'll make you rich and wealthy. I don't believe these people are bad, you gotta, but you gotta understand the risk. You've gotta understand the risk that is involved. And that's, that goes in line with the story that I shared with you guys at the beginning of this video. That a stockbroker presented an idea to me and some friends an opportunity to make some money. I think we all understood the risk involved, but some lost. And that's the nature of the beast when you're investing. So that's why I always say, do not invest more than what you're willing or what you're able to lose. Some people put a number on it. Some people say invest 5%. Some people say invest 8%, 10%, 15%. You need to sit down and you need to figure out what you have extra and what you're willing to give up and what you're willing to risk. Any investment in any kind of stocks, cryptocurrency, something that's not tangible such as silver and gold, you've got to be willing and accept the fact that there's a very good chance you can completely lose that money. But then there's also a good chance you could come out as a winner and make profit and be a good investor and make lots of money. Now, I do not give financial advice on my channel, but I hope that I can give you guys a lot of good common sense and a, and a place where you guys can come to so that you can then make right the right decision for you and your family. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't given this video a like yet, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching.